how we view our weakness versus how God views it today on the Weekly Kingdom Outlook. Let's go. Well, greetings, folks. Pastor Lewis here with you. So glad that you are with me. Let's get a couple things out of the way, as I always seem to forget this. Um, you can subscribe to me. I'm on Instagram. I am on YouTube, and I am on Facebook. I am also on Rumble, uh, and so you can find me on all those platforms. Also, LewisDCN.com. So go there if you want to find a bunch of stuff. I have finished my manual on. Um, Ancient Pathways, and that is going to be edited. I've already done the major edit part now. I make someone checks my work and changes anything that needs to be changed, and then that should be within a week, and that's going to be on the website, and you can get that. I, if you're on my email list, you will get a 20% uh, discount code sent to you in the mail. It'll be good for about a week, and you can get that early. Also, on Locals.com, you can... If you're a supporter there, whatever, you also get that code in there. So you can also get that um, um, package, that GSS package as well. Really excited about that one. I've had that one in the shoot for a while. And now that I feel like I got that one off my plate, I can now focus on writing some other things. So today I want to talk about, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to excel, if you're going to uh, fulfill what God has called you to do. And I, I believe this. I believe God has called us all. I think we have a tremendous calling in Christ for greatness. That, that does not mean everyone is going to achieve it. Everyone's going to fulfill it. But I don't ever want to sit there and go, you know what, you, God hasn't called you to nothing. I don't believe that. I believe God has called us to do remarkable things. I do believe that for some people, they're going to have to work a lot harder because they have not worked up to this part on maybe working on their character, their uh, their their um, communication skills and things like that. They haven't done a lot of work in those areas, and now they might have a lot of work to do. I've been working on mine for 30 years, and I don't think I've uh, completed that yet. So what are we to do? How are we supposed to handle? Um, and let's just talk of one. You know, are you... Are you afraid of failure? Are you, um, I think a lot of things that people get gripped, gripped with, and we call it fear, but I think it's actually anxiety, and that they're anxious that somehow God's going to be disappointed with them. God's going to um, disqualify them. God's going to uh, remove them, or uh, God's going to call them a failure, and they're not going to fulfill it. And so uh, anxiety is a big one that we struggle with. And what is anxiety? Anxiety is really, to me, misplaced thought and trust um, that's not placed on God. In other words, my thoughts and my trust must be in Him. But if my thoughts and trust are in my own ability, if my thoughts and trust are fearful, maybe I don't believe in myself. That's even worse than believing in myself, I guess. Um, that I can get anxious for tomorrow. And trust me, today, I mean, as we sit here, it's uh, October... Um, uh, man, it's October. What is it? It is October 25th, 2022, when I'm making this one. And we have a lot of stuff, you know, out in the world. And, um, and I think that, you know, every day, every day there is like, uh, you know, with the media, every day is like the world's coming to an end. Climate change, we're all going to die. We're not dying because of climate change, folks, okay? Um, number one, the climate, they're actually talking like one degree. And let me just ask you, if it got one degree warmer, would that be good or bad? Well, a lot of people in the colder climates wouldn't have to use as much, think about this, you wouldn't have to use as much uh, energy to make heat. Now, you would have air conditioning. We could make it through that. And my, my point is, I don't think it's as bad as they think it is. But by the way, we know it was warmer 100, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. Canada at one time used to farm six to seven months out of the year. So we also know there was an ice age. We're not, we're not going anywhere. So we'll survive all that. And, and that's just, it's just fear. And everything's fear. In the church, it's fear. The society's going to hell in a handbasket. And, and it can make us really anxious for tomorrow. 
you know, the inflation's up in, you know, around the world, but we decided to join them in America. We didn't have to, but we decided to join them. And now we are sitting there with massive inflation and everything does cost a lot more. Let me just tell you that. It just does. It's about 50% more. And, and that's, that's what we've done. But you know what? All that doesn't matter because Christ is still on the throne. Jesus is our God and, uh, and the Father's sitting there with them. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And guess what? Jesus is governing everything and he's doing a really great job with it. Okay? And he's, in, he's, he's got me and you. And he's got this. And, but I want to talk about anxiety for someone. How does God view our anxiety versus the way maybe... Now, I don't have a lot of anxiety. I don't feel... <laughs> But who knows? I might. I might just not be aware of it, right? But it says this, be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. So it might be anxiety. Maybe you get attacked with, I can remember 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we were going through some of the upheavals we were going through in our church that, you know, I was, my wife wasn't working. I'm the only one working. I already taken a major pay cut uh, to start the church about a 2000 to 2500 a month pay cut to start the church and we didn't know if we were going to have money tomorrow. Matter of fact, we we even went like uh 2 months in one year where I didn't get paid. Okay? And how how does God view that fear? Like when I'm feeling fear and and so number one it's not from him, but how does he view it? How does he how does he look at my process? And I know God loves the process. I I'll tell you what if there is no resistance, you won't build any character. Okay, so we're, our character really isn't built well. Um, and this is Romans chapter 5. It's not built well when it's built without resistance. Like if you look at a kid, if you give a kid everything he wants and he never has to grow up or take responsibility and, and steward things well, then that kid becomes what we call a spoiled brat. And they're entitled and it doesn't build a lot of character that way. But if you teach them how to work and how to labor and how to overcome obstacles, they seem to have a lot better character. All right. There was times where I would get attacked in the middle of the night with fear. And my, I literally wake up and I swear my heart felt like it was coming out of my chest. It felt like I was doing like, you know, I, I guess you would call it a panic attack. I just didn't know. Um, I didn't know that or whatever. But I, but I also, but I was aware, I was aware it was of the devil. And I, I was aware that it didn't matter how things looked, but how did I respond to that? Now, the way I responded to that was through prayer uh, and supplication and thanksgiving. What I would do is I'd have to sometimes get up and go into my living room and open my Bible and read and pray all night until I got my spirit back in line till I got my, my mind, my spirit and everything. And sometimes it took me five, six hours. Now, what we think is that God gets upset when we're, we're not flawless. When, in other words, when we're not perfect and well, Lou, you shouldn't have panic attacks. You should trust God. Well, that's, that's true. You're right. Um, Lou, you shouldn't have anxiety because, you know, you should not be anxious for anything. And a lot of times we want to beat up people because they have anxiety. But it's how we process that is the great reward in that. So in other words, when I have, if I don't have, I don't think I have a lot of anxiety anymore. Um, um, I've learned to sense it coming maybe and get my mind stayed on God real quick. But I'm not saying I, I can't have an attack or anything like that. Um, you know, you could, you could find any circumstance and find uh, like a crack in it, you know, and go, oh boy, what if that falls down? Um, so how does God view me and you when, let's say, you're fearful of tomorrow. Let's say you're, you're like I know people, they're, they're struggling. I, I want to find a spouse. Well, and, and it's fearful that you're going to be alone. And how does God view it when you're not sure about your job tomorrow and it's got you fearful of finances? You know, maybe, maybe you're in a marriage and you're having some trouble and the enemy keeps telling you you're going to get divorced and you're fearful. And how, do, how does God, um, does God judge us? Does God go, you know, you shouldn't even be having those thoughts? Because that's what the church does a lot, right? They rebuke you. 
they, we rebuke the person who's under attack for actually being under attack and not realize that would be like, um, you know, rebuking England for being attacked by Germany. Right. You know, it's just, that's silly. Right. But it's sometimes what the church actually does is sometimes they, they actually, uh, go out of their way to focus on the person under abuse or attack and, and not come alongside them. But let me just tell you how I view this with God and how I believe God views this. When, when I would get up, and even though it took me five hours to get my, you know, spirit and hope again, to get my mind stayed on him again, and, and to get myself, and, you know, wrestling with, you know, my own heart and my own mind, and get it back into obedience to God, and it might have taken me five hours. You know what? I believe that God, that's where character is formed, and that's where favor comes from God. It's when you have anxiety and when you have fear and when you have concerns and doubts and that you turn to God, because this is what it says, be anxious for nothing. Now, you know what he's not saying? He is not saying that if you're anxious, you've sinned. What Paul is saying here is, look, when anxiety comes, choose, choose to say no to anxiety, but instead take that thing you're anxious for and make supplications and prayer for it, and then give God thanksgiving by letting your request, because you've let your request be known to God. In other words, instead of sitting there and just wallowing in it, and you might have, look, this is a battle. This is a battle. But if you will sit there and then learn that process, two things are going to happen. You're going to get the victory. And I'm going to show you a verse that talks about this. But the other thing you're going to get is you're going to get shaped by the grace given to you in that moment. Okay, because grace shapes you. I've taught him that before. But let's just go to one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And it's 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 12. And let's look what Paul says. Now, I want to like, I want to tear down Paul a little bit for you. I want to make Paul human. Sometimes we treat the apostles or people in faith like they're superhuman. I want to, I want to, I want to put this here on you, okay? And lest I should be exalted, this is verse 7, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I exalt him. In other words, lest I become haunty, lest become like I'm prideful. God allowed me to have this uh, warfare with a messenger that would buffet me because God doesn't want me to be exalted where I can fall. Satan wants to exalt me. And to be honest with you, if it, that, that, he says, I love how he says this, a, a uh, thorn in the flesh was given to me. Well, who gave it to him? The father. Now, this might sound real harsh to you, but the father knew that I want Paul's character to be, I want his, I want him to be fashioned by my grace. And because he's got so many revelations, he could get puffed up, but I don't want Paul. I love Paul so much. I don't want Paul rubbed up. I'm allowing him to be buffeted so I can teach him something. But so also in that warfare, that grace will not only be given, but grace will begin to shape him. So that Paul, now you remember this, he's talking about something that happened 14 years prior writing this letter. Okay. So this is real early, probably in his ministry. And he says, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Lord, please, will you take this away? And the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So what is God saying to him? Say, Paul, you think you're strong, but you're not. But you want to be strong then say yes to my grace in this situation. Turn to me, lean on me, and I'll show you what true strength is. The strength that you're looking for is not in you, but it's in me. And if you'll, if you will, yeah, sure, I can just remove this from you, Paul, but you don't get any stronger because I removed it. There's no strength in me removing it. Okay, you're still the same person. 
you were before it. So instead of you, I don't want you to say, Paul, where I'm sending you, the things I've called you to do, I need you to have the character you need for this. So instead of me removing this, I want you to learn that in your weakness, Paul, in your fear, in your, um, in, in your anxiety, that's why Paul could say be anxious for nothing. In all these things, Paul, I want you to know something, that you could come to me with all these things and I will be there for you and my grace will come upon you and you will overcome all these things, but not in your strength, but in me. And he says this, Therefore, for, therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. So here's what we tend to do. We think God wants us to go, I'm, not, I'm stronger than anxiety. I'm stronger than fear. And he doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to come to him in those moments. Learn to come to him. And go, Father, I have this spirit, you know, this fear, this anxiety, it's coming at me. I ask for your strength in this moment. I ask for your grace in this moment. I come to you. I give you thanks. Even in this situation, I give you thanks. You're, you're shaping, but let your power rest upon me. Let your grace be sufficient for me that I might overcome this, that I might walk this out and that I'll be strong in this situation. Therefore, I take pleasure, Paul says, in affirmities. <laughs> he's talking about, he's not talking about sickness and illness. He's talking about infirmities of his weakness. Um, you know, uh, you might not, you know, when God called me to preach, I didn't like speaking in front of people. When he calls me, I realize I have to get over myself in a way. Like, it's not what I would have chosen. Okay. I loved ushering so much. Um, but speaking in front of people? Me, everyone looking at me is not what I really desired at all. And yet God did it and it's been his grace that I've been able to do it. I have, I, we all have fears. Like when you start out, you have fears of God, are you going to move? God, am I right? God, is there going to be any anointing? God, you have all these kind of fears. Don't let anyone kid you that they thought they were all that in a bag of chips from the time they came. They're puffed up. Okay, I, I don't buy that because everyone I know stepped into this. It's a fearfully thing. You step into your calling. It's not this. Now, we're confident in Christ. Okay, that's different than I was. I could do it. I was that that doesn't work. How does God view it? God knows we're weak. This is the part that people don't understand. The father made us. He knows we're weak. He knows. He knows because of sin. He knows because of the weakness of the flesh. He knows where we're weak. He wants to show you. He wants to partner with you. He wants you to bring all those fears, anxieties to him in prayer and go. Don't ask him to remove them. Ask for his grace that it would rest upon you. The, the, the analogy there in the Greek is he'll hoopa, he'll overshadow you and come upon you and you will walk into a dimension that you're not familiar with. And then you learn, once you learn that, like Paul, oh, I'm feeling this. I can step into the grace of God right now. See, because I believe, I believe a lot of anxiety and fears come from me taking my eyes off of God. Keep your eyes on the ball. Now, as an air traffic controller on a ship, when, when, a, when a plane is coming in, they get, we, we're directing them the whole way. Okay, we'll be telling them they're high, low, left, right. They might be on what's called a automatic approach. None of the pilots like going. They back. By the way, back in the early '80s, they could land a they could land a plane on a carrier deck. It's called a mode one, and they could land it. All the pilots didn't like it. Okay, pilots don't like having a computer land the plane. Okay, so they never very. I, I don't think I saw one mode one, uh, maybe one a year. Okay, where they would just do it and say, okay, we could do one. But they didn't like it. The, the pilots like to be in control. Isn't that us? We like to be in control. But, but the, way they, the way they fly the plane, if, you're, if, you look at the, if you look at the island of the deck, let's say, island of an aircraft carrier, a big, tall structure, you're not going to land the plane. If you look at your, if, when, you're, when you're a mile out, if you're looking at the instruments, you're not going to land the plane. 
you hear you hear say you, you see it in Top Gun uh, the first one where he says Maverick got the Maverick ball. Okay, they don't actually say that. They say the call sign of the airplane ball. They don't use their their handles. Okay, they use the call sign of the aircraft ball. Okay, and they'll go. You know what what we'll do is the controllers will say Slogan five one three quarters of a mile call the ball. Slogan five one ball, and they'll say their they'll say their fuel ball. 3.5. That means he's got 3,500 pounds of fuel left on board. So he'll go, um, he might go Tomcat ball, but usually it's just Slogan 5 1 ball 3.5. Okay? And we're writing down. We write because if he's hook skips, we want to know if he needs fuel. That's what we're that's why he gives us his fuel state. We need to know if he needs fuel, if he if he if the hook skips and the hook could come down and bounce over the wire. And it's called a hook skip. And he goes right off the angle deck. He floors it, goes right off, and comes back around. But he might need fuel. Okay, so he does that. You know what he does the whole way down? He's watching that ball. He's watching two things at once. He's got this ball, and it's called a Vassy. It's got a row of lights. And it's, it's I think, white or green in the middle, and then amber and then red, amber and red. Okay? And so... Um, I think it's two different colors. It might be amber and you know amber and red, but if he's low, it's red. I do believe because you can hit the deck too early, and high. And so what it does, he wants to keep that in the green. So that's his glide slope, the green. And he's also looking at the angle deck. And what's so amazing about this is the ship's on an angle. So ship's on an angle like this, right? Let's put it this way. Ship's on no ship's going this way. Let's see. I want to make it so you could see it. The ship's on an angle like this. So it's actually here's the ship. But the deck is going this way, okay? So what they do is at the end of the deck, they drop down, they drop down lights like this. So here's the deck. So when he's lined up, it looks like this. If he goes the wrong way, it'll look like this, and it'll look like, and it literally makes an arrow which way he needs to fly. So if he goes to the right, it makes a left arrow like this. And he has to go, he knows to go to the left. Okay. But the point is this, he, he has to keep his eyes on the ball the whole way down. He doesn't look at the deck. He looks at the ball and the, and the lights. He's looking at the lights when he's landing. Why is that important? Because as long as he does that, he's going to land. Okay. Here's the thing. If you'll keep your eyes on Christ, you're going to fly. You're going to soar. It's when I take my eyes off Jesus that I tend to have my worst nights. Now, I've learned not to do that, okay? I've learned to, I'm the one, and, and, and Bill just said this, uh, I was on a Zoom with him today, he, and I wrote, this, wrote some stuff down. And I love Bill. I so love it. Um, <clears throat> um, I am the guardian of my soul. It's such a great statement. You are the guardian of your soul. So it's your job. It's not my job. And so choose to keep yourself focused on Jesus by reading his word, by prayer, by remember testimonies and all that stuff. And that will help you. If you're, if you're, you know, for me, what I would do when I would have these financial fears is I would read scriptures of God's financial breakthrough. And then I would find testimonies of God's financial, and I'd read them. So I'd have to get up and I'd have to get my mind back. And what I realized I was doing was I gave too much time to the thought of the financial woes. Okay, I just gave too much thought to it. And that, that thought was actually producing fear. Now I was giving access from the enemy. Now the panic in the middle of the night, that was a full, that was a full blown enemy attack. Cause I'd be sleeping and have this panic attack and, um, never really told too many people about it. I had about three of them, but I would just go and calm my spirit down before the Lord. And I did that by prayer, supplications, reading the word and giving thanks. And he always saw me through. And just so you know, we never went bankrupt and he rescued us all the way through because that's how faithful he is. Amen. Amen. So I love you. Don't, don't get, don't beat yourself up. And one of the ways that we do that is we, we take the fears and we beat ourselves up with guilt and shame because we had the fear. Do not do that. You have anxiety. Don't beat yourself up that you have anxiety. 
Just go to the Lord in prayer. Don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't cut yourself. Don't do anything. Just go to the Lord in prayer and give him thanks and say, Lord, your grace is sufficient. Would you allow your grace to come upon me so I can live? The, and your, the character of God uh, uh, will, will help you. And the journey, uh, the Father values that journey with us. He really does. Matter of fact, he really, really does. And so when we choose him in the midst of the conflict, we invite the favor of God on us and, and the resources of heaven. So God bless you. Do that and see if you don't start seeing your breakthrough come about in Christ Jesus. I love you. You have a great day. Bye-bye.